this lovely necklace, which was designed by Matthew, has quite a few elements in it and it's quite fun to make and it's quite easy and it's great for beginners. We've got simple stringing in the necklace. We've made a beaded link here for the center tassel. The tassel is actually done with bead weaving so it's lovely and soft and it hangs nice and low. You can wear it over a jumper or a nice long shirt. I know you'll love this so let's get into it. Because we're using quite a few different techniques in this one necklace, there's quite a few things to get out ready before we begin. So I'll just go through the tools first. Because we're going to be doing a little bit of wire work, we're going to be needing round nose pliers. These are the ones with the, the cone shape. We're going to be using chain nose, which have the flat shape here. And then obviously cutters, which cut pair of scissors for your thread and a beading needle. The findings you will need are some crimps, um, a clasp, you're going to need closed rings. These are a six mil closed ring, head pin. We've got a bead cone and this is about 17 by 16 millimeters. I've got nine little bead caps and they hold a six mil bead. Now for the beads, we've got 6mm glass pearls, 4mm, 3mm faceted check glass, a lot of people know it as fire polish. I've also got faceted drops here. Now these are a top dill, drill drop, so the, the hole actually goes across the top. So and they're 12 by 6mm at the bottom. I've got some size 10 Preciosa seed beads. Now thread wise you're going to need some beading thread. I wouldn't use fire line in this instance because it's for the tassel and you want it to be soft so you know a nylon based one. Uh, some jewelry wire and finally a drop of glue uh, just to um, put on your knots but that is um, optional. So we've, once you've got this all ready we'll begin. We're going to begin with the tassel. And here's one I've made earlier so you can see and it has nine of um, the little strings that come into the cone. So this area here is done with our um, beading thread. So as you can see I've got the, the little bead caps, the crystal drops, the six mil and the four mil pearls, the three mil check glass, the seed beads and I've got my closed ring. I've also put on my needle and thread. I've got about a meter and a half. If you can handle a meter and a half it needs about that much then you don't have to change threads and on my needle. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to the end of the thread and I'm going to tie a knot or tie that thread to the, the, uh, the closed ring <laughs> and I'll just do that with a few little overhand knots. So there's one and I'll do a few of those and later on when I'm finished I will actually um, put a drop of glue on this knot to, to hold it there. So you can see I've just done a few times until you feel that this is securely on here and it's not going to come off but as I said in the end put a little drop of glue on there. So now that I've got that attached I'm going to make my first tassel. So I will start by picking up 15 seed beads. Now obviously you can vary the length of this to suit yourself you know depending on your size. I'm sort of tall and larger so I tend to make my tassel longer but obviously if, if you're quite petite you might like to make it a little smaller. Now you want 15 beads so I'll just count that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 2 off. Okay and I'll just bring that down to the ring then I'm going to pick up one 3mm check glass, 
one four mil glass pearl, one six mil, one four mil, and another three mil. So you can see I have that there, so it goes smaller to big and smaller again. That comes up. Then seven more seed beads. Four, five, six, seven. And now we're going to put a little crystal on the end. So I get my bead cap and I thread it from the top to the bottom. I get my crystal. Now because it's top drilled I can just go straight across the top. And then I'm going to bring my needle back through all of these beads I've just added. Now sometimes it's easy, I'm working on the bead mat, just to hold your finger there to keep the, the, the thread from running away and then you can just slowly start to go back through the beads. Or you can hold your fingers either side, whatever's easier. And you can do a few at a time or you can do a whole lot at a time, whatever's, however works for you. I tend to sort of put my finger there in place. Don't pull it up all the way. We'll do that at the end. So then I'll just do these last few. Okay, now a little trick. When you get to this point, go under the closed ring and go through it from the back. And when we pull up our thread, and I'll just show you how to do this because obviously we don't want to see gaps here in our tassel. So if you hold the end bead, see, you can just pull it up. I'll just do that again. Just, see, just by pulling that, get that in place and then you can pull that up and then you've got a nice, you know, a nice tassel there. There's no gaps showing. Now because I've got this thread already under my ring, I can just bring my needle around and go under again which will form a loop. I like to tie a little knot at the top of all of my tassels. So now see I've got a loop, just pull that thread through and then I'll take the needle through the loop. So if you see that I've gone from underneath or underneath again I've got a loop and then I'm bringing my needle under the loop and then when I pull it up and you can put your needle down, you can hold your finger on the on the ring and you can just slowly bring it up and then pull it tight and you've got a nice little holding knot. And then we're ready to make our next tassel. So I'll do one more and just show you again. So it's 15 seed beads. quite relaxing making this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Two, three, four, five. Now it's quite important I always check that I've got the right number of beads before I, I thread the rest on. One, two, three, four, five, six, ten, eleven, twelve, fifteen. The reason is because our tassels we want them to be uniform. So if I've got a bead too short or a bead too long, it's not going to sit right. So it's always pays to check as you're doing it that you, you've got it right. So again, a three mil faceted, a four mil pearl, a six mil pearl, a four mil pearl, and finally a three mil faceted. So you can see the configuration again. That goes down, Six, seven seed beads, four, five, six, seven, and then I'll show you the cap again. So remember the cap comes in from the top, goes down, crystal across, right there and then go back and thread through those beads again. You have to be careful when you're threading back that you don't split your thread. It's, uh, it can be done. Now if you do split your thread, which means the needle 
pierce as you thread uh, sometimes because you're only going back and forth once it's not too much of a trouble but you might find it hard to get through the bead so if that's the case just undo your needle and just pull out the thread and then put it through and you might find it easier to pick it up and go through one bead at a time just depends on how you know how you're comfortable with it I sort of tend to keep it on the mat so I can just position it where I want it so then once I've got up to the top remember I go under the ring and pull it up and then to, in order to to if you pull here on the end that will bring it right up to the ring because you want it to sit right up next to the ring once you've got get that one out of the way once you've got it sitting up next to the ring then you can just put your finger on it and see I pull the, I pull the thread and that brings it up nicely then again because I'm coming through I've gone out and through I can now go back under and through again to create a loop so you can see there's my loop and then back through the loop with the needle and then as I said to you before bring it down so that it's just take your time with it and do it slowly and just I hold the ring with my finger and just bring in that knot nice and close and then pull it tight oops sorry about that and pull it nice and tight so then now you can see I've got my beginning knot I've got a little knot at the top of here and then I've got a knot here now I'm going to make nine of these and I'm going to attach them all to the ring so I'll do that and then I'll come back and then show you how to attach the bead cone now I'm just on my last tassel now and I'm just going to as I've showed you before pull on the little crystal to bring it up to the end hold it in place then pop it up and then I'm going to do my knot here and then I'll just show you how to finish that off so there's my last knot okay. so now that I've got my last knot done what I can do is I'll just hold it in my hand like this and I'm just going to finish off that thread by doing a few more knots so I'm going to go underneath make a small loop go through the loop and then what I'm going to do actually is go through the loop twice and that will create quite a nice lot and then I'm going to do that a few more times just because after I've done all this work I don't want it to come unraveled or undone the nice thing about using this little ring it's going to be inside our bead comb and no one is going to ever see this working so it doesn't matter if your stitches look like dog stitches it's all good because no one will ever know so now that I've done quite a few knots and I'm satisfied that my thread is tied off I'm going to just put a little bit of glue on this area here so I've just got a small bit of you can use a bit of nail polish if you like I'm using super glue because it dries pretty quick it's nice and messy which I love okay just put a little bit on the knots and up the thread and the same on the other side and of course on your fingernails as well lovely there we go it's messy stuff this okay just pop that away now I'm just going to cut these short I'm not going to cut them all the way close just leave a little bit now the nice thing about this is I hate having to watch glue dry but with this we don't have to because we're actually going to be putting it onto a pin so I'll just put this aside while I prepare my pin I'm going to prepare the loop now that is going to attach our tassel through the bead cone so I've got here a head pin and I've got my round nose pliers the conical ones and I'm just going to make a loop 
at the end of here. I do have uh, other videos on my web channel that go into great detail about how to do these. So you're welcome to pop over there and have a look. But I will show you again. I'm basically positioning my head pin about a good centimetre up my pliers. These pliers are lovely and fine so I need to come reasonably. So I want a good size loop. I lay it on my finger. Now you can see how it's dead straight in a right angle and I'm going just to roll the wire dead straight along there and by putting it on my finger and just pressing down on my finger as I do it I can actually see exactly where I'm rolling. Now if you don't go all the way that's fine just pick it up and continue rolling. Now once you've got to that stage I just turn the pliers around so that see and down slightly because then I can just hold this at the bottom and give it a little tweak. See I've pushed it to make it sit because I want this loop to sit directly above the pin. Now don't worry that it's not closed at the moment that's fine. So what we have now is our little loop on our pin. I'm going to bring in my chain nose pliers, going to lay it on my finger, grab it across and then lift it up because now I can bring in my little tassel and I can thread it on. If I keep it on my finger I'm still in control. I can pick up that wire where I left off and do the reverse action and close it. So now I've got it on there. Now what's really important at this stage is that you make sure that there is no gap here and this is where we want to make sure it's closed. Now the nice thing is it's hidden inside the cone so it doesn't matter if you squash it or make a mess of it. It doesn't matter if it doesn't look great. The most important thing is that it's attached to here and that it's not going to come. See now look see there's still a little gap there so I need to make sure that that gap is gone make sure it's in there. And what you can even do here because it doesn't matter is cheat a little bit and just pop it in like that. There we go. So now I'm satisfied that that's attached and that it won't come off. That's fine. Okay now we're going to put it onto here. So because it's a head pin I need to cut the head off. So I'm bringing my cutters and just come in and cut off the end like that. See notice I, I covered it so it didn't fly away. Okay so we're ready. I've got my cone and I've got some beads to put on the top. I've got a six mil and a four mil. I'm going to thread this up inside the cone. It'll stop there. I've got a little bit of thread sticking up. It's okay just tuck it down. You can cut them a little closer if you need to. I like to leave a little bit on there. Just a little bit closer. Now that the glue's dried it's quite firm so I can cut it in quite close. Pop that up through there. There we go. So now see it won't go further than that so I can hide the hole with my 6 mil bead and then my 4 mil bead. And now I'm going to make a loop at the top. So the first thing I'm going to do is I've got my chain nose pliers and I'm going to hold it up quite firmly against the bead just so that little bit of gap and then I'm going to just use my finger and I'm going to push against the pliers and turn that over so that again it's a right angle. Now that little bit of gap there is just what I need to do my, loop, my, my wraps. The next thing I'm going to do is take my round nose pliers. I'm going to position them so that again see how that's dead straight to that with that sticking out there like that. And I might make it a little bit smaller because I only want a small loop. I'm going to put my finger underneath, bring it up, over the top and down. See I'm just moulding around the pliers and if you look what I have now 
is I've got a, sh a shepherd hook shape. Going to take the rounders pliers again and put the bottom jaw into there. Again, see, I've got a right angle. See, that's dead straight. And I'm going to hold my pliers quite firmly and now take the wire down and across to the other side. See that? So I've taken it underneath and across to the other side. And if I undo it, you can see the shape that I now have. Okay, now there's a couple of ways you can do this next bit. We're going to use this little piece here to wrap around this gap. Now you can either hold it with your pliers across like that and then just use your finger to start wrapping it around or you can hold it with these pliers and use your fingers to start wrapping it around or if you haven't got strong fingers you can also use your pliers themselves grab the end and start wrapping it around I personally like to start it off with my finger see I'm just wrapping around like that and I'll keep wrapping it around a couple of times and then when I get to when it gets to the point where it's a bit short then I'll grab it with those pliers and to keep taking it around there we go so I can get it all the way around now it has a memory so if you want to you can at this point loosen it off a bit and then come in with your cutters nice and close snip it off notice it went flying then and then come in and then I can close it again there we go and I'm just open and close open and close as I turn open and close open and close until I'm satisfied that that's in there it's a little bit of a fiddle but the nice thing about this is because we're going to be putting this onto jewelry wire it will not come off it won't go anywhere there we go now the other thing I'm going to do now is tidy up this I also want it facing see how it's facing flat I want it to be facing up so I'm going to just put my pliers across here and give it a little twist so it's facing in the right direction there we go so now I've got my loop facing that way and I've got my cone so there's my beaded cone all on there ready to go to the stringing so the next thing we're going to do is attach it to the necklace now we're moving on to the necklace I've got myself cut some jewelry wire and uh, I use uh, 0.3 jewelry wire and I've got about a meter it's always better to have more than you need I'm making this quite a long necklace but you can adjust that whatever size you like I've got here my chain nose pliers and my cutters I've got a clasp a couple of crimp beads which are designed to squash I've got my four mil my six mil and my seed beads so the first thing I'm going to do at one end is I'm going to thread on and you don't need a needle with the, with the jewelry wire which is great I'm just going to thread on two little crimps I'm going to thread on the clasp on one end if you pop the crimps on your finger they pop up and then you can easily and give yourself room you don't have to use just the very very end I'm going to thread back through see how they've popped up on my finger so it's really easy to thread them back through I can hold the end of the tail and then I can literally just slide the crimps up like that pull on it and now here they are up towards the end of the clasp now I'm going to work flat on the mat because that gives me control I've got a small tail here as you see although the tail length really doesn't matter at this point I'm going to leave myself a little bit of wiggle room here with the clasp so it can move about and then I'm going to position those two little crimps right there next to the clasp I take my chain nose pliers and actually you might even find it easier to pick it up and then because I like to do them together I'm doing two for strength you can bring it in further down the plier and give it a little squash now 
a good squash is what is recommended here. So you need to put a bit of welly into it. And you see now I've got two nice little flat bars. The thing to do is to pick at them with your fingernail. If they slide or if they move, come back in and give them another go. It's very, this is a very important part of your necklace because if you don't get this squashed and firm, the whole necklace will fall apart. So there's the key. Now that's one end that's permanently attached my clasp. I'm going to come to the other end and I'm going to start threading up my necklace. I'm going to start with one four mil bead. The back of the necklace, which actually I'll bring in the one I've finished already. The back of the necklace here, <clears throat> I'm using the four mil beads around the back of my necklace. And then as I get further down the sides, I'm going to bring in the six mil beads. So what I've done here is I've actually for me for this length because I, I like it to sit sort of just above my waist a bit I'm putting in 15 of the four mil beads with six seed meat beads in between so I'll just show you that first little bit and then I'll continue to do it so I've got one four mil and then six seed beads one two three Or five six mm -hmm. and then another four mil bead and then six seeds one two four five six and a four mil so I'll continue on with that until I have put on my 15 four mils and then I'm going to carry on with oh now I'll just show you this bit first actually you just use your tail you can keep it in there and just thread those beads onto the tail now see how that's not going through what you can do is come in with your cutters make it a little bit tidier because I think the end of it's a bit ratty there I've recut that and then I'll wiggle that four mil bead over. There you go. See that went on really nicely then. You can bring that up and same with the seed beads. Now you can either just cut it off after the first bead or you can continue to thread the beads over. There we go. Get in there. And if you get to the point where you've had enough you can just stop. There we go. Now they're all on there and now I'm going to continue on so I'll meet you back once I've got them all on. Okay now I've threaded on my four mil beads and then I've with six seed beads in between don't forget you can change this however you like you can mix six and fours on the same you know together or it's really the fun bit about this part of the stringing is that it's really up to you. Um, I've got my last six beads and then uh, my last six mil and I've got 15 four mils and 15 six mils because as I said I wanted to make it nice and long. Now I'm going to now put my tassel into the middle and how I'm going to do that is I'm just going to put one seed bead. I'm going to thread the tassel and the reason we did that wrapped loop is because now because this this wire is very thin if I just done a plain loop like I had done inside it would just slip straight out it doesn't matter how closed you've got it it would just slip straight out so that's why you need uh, a good closed loop or a, a double loop which is on one of my other videos uh, then another seed bead and that just will make a nice little tidy end for it there and then it's back into we're going to do the opposite side so it's going to be now a six mil bead and then six seed beads and just more of the same so one two three four five get on there six and then another six six mil and I'll do that I'll put in the 15 six mil and then I'll also carry on and do the four so it's exactly the same as the other side and once I've got that threaded on I'll show you how to put the clasp at the other end. 
I've threaded on my other half of the necklace. I've got 15 of the 6 mil and then 15 of the 4 mil and I've got 6 beads in between each. At this point, before we add the clasp, I advise you, because I've made this mistake so many times, is just to go back and just check that both sides of the necklace are matching and that you haven't made any mistakes. Uh, oftentimes you might add have added in extra beads or not enough and at this point it's easy to go back in and change it. Once you've put that clasp on the other end it's pretty permanent. So okay I'm satisfied that I haven't made a mistake. I'm just going to now make sure that all the beads are all down to the end of the cl other clasp and I'm just doing that by running my fingers along it and I mean you can stand it all the way up and then because you want a bit of movement in your necklace just roll it out and that will give you enough movement so that it's not a tight stiff necklace. I'm going to now add I've got my two crimps and this is the other side of my clasp. In this instance I'm using uh, another closed ring but you can use whatever clasp you like. I'm going to thread on two crimps and the other side of my clasp. And again if you pick it up on your finger just and be very careful with this wire. It's, it's flexible but it will kink. Once it's on your necklace it's pretty okay but while you're working with it if you kink it it, um, it never goes back. You, you can ruin the wire so you have to be gentle with it, reverent I say. So now you can see here I've got a loop here, I've got my two crimps, I've got my first bead and I've come out with my wire through my first bead. If you want to you can even go through a couple more if you prefer. Uh, then I'm going to just slide this down so that there's no real gaps in the wire and I'm going to put my finger on it. See I'm working flat on the mat then I can just pull this up. I can see what I'm doing and I can just pull it up. I can give myself a bit of wiggle room. There we go. Just get it in position where you want it. There we go. I'm still holding it. I come in with my pliers and then I'll squash them both at the same time. Once I've squashed it I can pick it up and get a good squash so that they're both nice and flat. That's free. Check them, that's fine. Then I'm going to come in from this bead. Now what you can do is you can take your wire and go down a little bit further down the uh, necklace if you want to. It's not necessary. Come in with your pliers, hold this wire and push quite firmly against that bead so that you can just snip it off like that. The wire just springs inside and we've now got our finished necklace. There it is. Mm -hmm.